Hello, I'm Syl, and Sig and I are standing in the lobby of what some would argue is the cornerstone of the Princeton community, the Princeton Public Library. Currently, we're in front of The Wall, otherwise known as Happy World. We are th so thrilled to have with us today Tim Quinn, the Public Information Director for the Princeton Public Library. Hello, Hi. Tim. Hi, welcome. Um, I thought I'd we begin our tour today um, at Happy World, since it's a lot of people's first experience in the library, and it's our signature piece of public artwork. And it, it's a, it was a really wonderful collaboration between the artist Dick Yung Kong, who's based in New York, and the Princeton community. It features a combination of Kong's works, his paintings and woodcuts, with artifacts that were donated by people in the community. And these artifacts range from pictures of people's children and, um, and drawings that kids did to um, historically significant artifacts, such as these playing cards up here, which uh, belong to Albert Einstein. We are on the first floor where you can come and get your library card. Often this is the first stop for someone who's new to the library and new to town, and um, this is where you would come to the checkout desk to get your library card, which w allows you not only to borrow any book or DVD or video in the library, but you can also use it to get um, museum passes, um, which are free passes to a dozen museums in New York and Philadelphia and in New Jersey as well. Um, yeah, the community room is our primary programming facility here at the library, uh, and there's pretty much something going on most weeknights and on Sunday afternoons and Saturday afternoons. I thought we'd end our tour of the first floor by pointing out that while the first floor is sort of a bustling uh, community center, that we also uh, have an area that's set aside for quiet study. On right. Heading up now to the second floor, and the second floor is where all the serious work gets done in the library, and it's the only floor where there's really kind of an expectation of quiet. Um, our conference room where book discussions are held is currently being rented by a community organization. Um, and more comfortable seating for reading. We sometimes use this fireplace area for programming also in the evenings. Welcome to the Princeton Room. This is our space that's dedicated to Princeton history, where newer residents can find out some of the rich history of our town and where people who are doing research about Princeton can find a wealth of information. One of the things that sets our library apart from a traditional notion of libraries is our technology center. It's a dedicated space for computer instruction and exploration. As you can see, there's a class going on right now, uh, one of our classes that we have daily here in various software applications and programs. Um, and it's also a place where people can just go and try out programs like Photoshop. It also houses what we call our gadget garage, which has um, a try-before-you-buy experience with digital video cameras and PDAs and iPods and you can even check out a Kindle here, not check it out as in remove it from the library, but you can see what it is and if you're interested in purchasing. So um, our second floor reference area combines a uh, the traditional book resources for reference with some of our 100 public access computers, um, which are throughout the library, but are uh, centered here. This, this corner of the second floor has been uh, given over to resources for business and consumers. Uh, and I'd like to show you our tower room, which is used for daily counseling sessions by SCORE, who work with small businesses, uh, people who are starting or growing businesses can get free counseling here on a daily basis. And it's yet another thing that you wouldn't think of as part of a traditional library experience. 
We're leaving behind the seriousness of the second floor and heading to the sometimes silly third floor, which is where our youth services department is. I love the architecture. Can you tell us a little about, about it? Sure. Our, our building was designed by Nick Garrison of uh, Hillier Architecture. Nick lives in town, and some people uh, point out that they think that this uh, staircase looks like a giant boat, and he wouldn't s necessarily cop to that, but uh, he did grow up on an island outside of Seattle, so I don't know whether that was a conscience influence or not. Our third floor features age-specific areas where kids from our youngest customers who were newborns to toddlers um, and goes around to teens. Everyone's welcome out on the terrace here, which on a nicer day you'd see people out there enjoying their lunch or reading and um, not quite the day for that. Um, as you can see here we're in the morning and so the focus a lot of times in the morning is on preschoolers. Um, There'll be a story time that's going to start soon in the story room. Uh, and as we go through the day here in the afternoon, if you come back around 3.30, you'll see that this area here uh, has been given over to um, homework help. Um, it'll be filled with elementary school and middle school students who are getting free homework help from teachers and community volunteers and Princeton University students um, so they can get a one-on-one -on -one homework help experience here after school Monday through Thursday any day when Princeton Regional Schools are in session and they can also enjoy study uh, opportunities in the study rooms. This area here is sort of elementary school to middle school row. <laughs> um, and again, if you come back in the afternoon, this will be filled with uh, students in, say, roughly grades two to seven using digital resources, um, researching projects, uh, getting some, or looking at their own artwork or at maybe one of our other pieces of public artwork um, that's uh, that that are available here on the third floor. Um, keeping with our age-specific geometry or geography here at the library, I'd like to take you over to see our teen center. of children books in foreign languages is really impressive. Sure, sure. I, you know, again, our world language collection from top to bottom it features a, a wide range of materials and a wide range <laughs> of languages, and it really kind of reflects the town that we live in, where people from all over the world come here to live, to study, and, um, you know, I think that that's reflected in their public library. We're here in the teen center now where it's kind of quiet in the morning, but in the afternoon it's filled with uh, high school students who are here studying or maybe playing a game of chess or hanging out and maybe just enjoying the view, which um, one of the nicest views in town. I'd like to say a big thank you to Tim Quinn for his fantastic tour of the library. We hope you enjoyed it, but we do have to say there's nothing like being here. This is Sig. This is Syl. See you soon.